Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. Abuse of climate data by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration affects all of climate science. In this video, I am going to discuss one particularly egregious abuse. This graph is from Oxford University's Our World in Data website. It's the share of U.S. land area with unusually high summer temperatures. Unusually hot summers are defined based on daily maximum temperatures. At each station, the recorded highs are compared with a full set of historical records. After averaging over a particular month or season of interest, the warmest 10% of years are defined as unusually hot. The graph shows that unusually high summer temperatures are affecting more of the U.S. now than at any time in history. But anyone who's familiar with the history of U.S. heat waves knows that this simply isn't true. The National Climate Assessment shows that heat waves used to be much worse in the United States and that summers have gotten much cooler over time. Heat waves peaked from the 1910s through about the 1950s and have been relatively mild ever since. The Environmental Protection Agency shows the same thing, that heat waves peaked during the 1930s. This graph shows the percent of U.S. stations reaching 100 degrees Fahrenheit sometime during the year for the past century. Back in the 1930s, more than two-thirds of the United States would reach 100 degrees Fahrenheit sometime during the year. Now we're down to about half of that. In other words, the area of the U.S. affected by hot afternoon temperatures has plummeted over the past century. We see the same trend for the percent of stations reaching 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius. During the 1930s, almost all of the United States would reach 95 degrees sometime during the year, but now the percentage is much smaller. And the same story for 90 degree days. The percent of hot days in the United States has also plummeted. This graph shows the summer percent of days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit across the United States. There were huge peaks during the 1930s and 1950s, but the past 50 years have been relatively mild. And exactly the same story for 95 degree days, and for 100 degree days. During the summer of 1936, almost one day out of five across the country was over 100 degrees. But now 100 degree days are largely confined to the southwest. 100 degree days used to be fairly common across the United States, but few people are old enough to remember this. This graph shows the number of all-time record maximum temperatures at all United States Historical Climatology Network stations with at least 100 years of data. The vast majority of stations set their all-time record maximum temperature more than 60 years ago and have never reached it again. The way I calculated this graph was if a temperature record was set in the 1930s and say matched again five years ago, it would be counted in both columns. But as you can see, record maximum temperatures across the United States have become very rare. The previous graph showed the number of all-time record maximum temperatures, but this one shows the number of summer daily records. Once again, daily record maximum temperatures used to be much more common prior to 60 years ago. The one spike we have on the right side of the graph was 1988, when NASA's James Hansen started the global warming scare before Congress. He predicted that heat waves were going to get much worse, but the exact opposite has happened. During July 1936, it was reported that heat waves killed 12,000 people in 86 cities across the United States in one week. I talk a lot about the heat of the 1930s, but there were plenty of very hot years prior to that. New York Times, June 29, 1901. Heat brings death and much suffering. Life rendered almost unbearable in the tenement districts. Chicago sizzles. Boston swelters. The following day, June 30th, 1901. New York welts in protracted heat. Temperature on the street from 98 to 106 degrees in the shade. Many dead and prostrated. The following day, July 1st, 1901. The city of Furnace virtually deserted. One day later, July 2nd, 1901. Heat's holocaust in the five boroughs. 87 deaths and 178 prostrations mark hottest July 1st on record. July 3rd, 1901. Heat brings death to over 200 persons. Tornado strikes Sing Sing Prison. July 4th, 1901. 200 more dead before rain falls. 94 degrees in early hours. Two weeks later, July 19th, 1901. The heat wave in Europe. Numerous deaths in London. Effects of a drought serious. No signs of a change in England. And a few days later, on July 22nd, 1901, the heat wave continued in Europe, and a new heat wave had started across the Midwest and was spreading into the East. Iowa set their all-time record of 19 consecutive days over 100 degrees Fahrenheit during July of 1901. And in August of 1901, Italy was having record heat. 
The thermometer in many parts of the country registers 43 centigrade, 109 Fahrenheit in the shade. The vineyards and entire districts have been shriveled up by the Scirocco and ruined to the very roots, as though set on fire. In 1884, the American Medical Weekly gave this report of past heat waves in Europe. In the year 627, the heat was so great in France and Germany that all the springs dried up, water became so scarce that many people died of thirst. In the year 879, work in the field had to be given up. Agricultural laborers persisting in their work were struck down in a few minutes, so powerful was the sun. In the year 993, the sun's rays were so fierce that vegetation burned up as under the action of fire. In the year 1000, rivers ran dry under the protracted heat. The fish were left dry in heaps and petrified in a few hours. Men and animals venturing in the sun in the summer of 1022 fell down dying. In the year 1132, not only did the rivers dry up, but the ground cracked and became baked to the hardness of stone. The Rhine and Alsace nearly dried up. Italy was visited by terrific heat in 1139. Vegetation and plants were burned up. During the Battle of Bella in 1200, there were more victims made by the sun than by weapons. Men fell down sunstruck in regular rows. The sun of 1277 was also severe. There was an absolute dearth of forage. There's lots more of these historical stories from Europe, but I'm going to go back to the United States now. A July 1911 heat wave killed thousands of New Englanders and sent many over the brink of madness. During 11 hellish days, horses dropped in the street and babies didn't wake up from their naps. In every major northeastern city, the sweltering heat drove people to suicide. On July 4, 1911, temperatures hit 103 in Portland, Maine, 104 in Boston, 105 in Vernon, Vermont, and 106 in Nashua, New Hampshire. Estimates of the death toll were as high as 2,000 people. The widespread belief that heat waves are getting worse has no historical basis. This graph from NOAA showing the rise in summer heat in the United States since the 1970s is completely fake. But how did they make it? And here's the answer. As I've shown in previous videos, they simply make the data up. Every month, a certain percentage of the NOAA data is fabricated, meaning it came from a computer model rather than from a thermometer. It's very easy to locate this data because they mark it with an E in their temperature database. Prior to the 1980s, about 10% of the data was typically estimated, but that's gone up in a hockey stick and now it's almost half of the data set. This hockey stick of fake data since the 1970s allows NOAA to produce any trend they want to produce. And that's how they created this fake graph, which has no bearing on reality. Then this fake graph gets propagated to other scientists, to the press, and to politicians. This leads to people who are being kept warm and alive by fossil fuels, imagining that they're burning up. Without the fossil fuels, they would be struggling to find ways to keep from freezing to death. But staring at a fake government graph causes them to lose all touch with reality. In 1841, Charles McKay wrote, Men, it has been well said, think in herds. It will be seen that they go mad in herds while they only recover their senses slowly, one by one. Every new subscriber to my channel helps recover more people from climate insanity. This channel should reach 75,000 subscribers this weekend. And remember to visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.